All right, today we are solving, this is 10, oops, that's 10, 7 work distance problems. And I did the math, we can't afford the dog. So a little, little joke for you. I'm not going to explain the joke. It's not, jokes aren't meant to be explained, you have to understand them. No, it's just lying because it doesn't want to go Okay. All right. Um, so we're going to do something called um, work problems. They're actually pretty easy. There's an easy way. And if there's nothing, like no variances, the easiest way to solve these work problems are like this. Job over time plus job over time equals job over time. Okay? So... Jeff can paint a room. This is like me and Miss Cacciatore grading papers. Uh, it takes me, you know, 24 hours to grade the stack, and it takes her four hours to grade the stack. What happens when we work together? Okay? How long does it take? Okay, so here we go. And we are going to, um, when we mix together, it's going to take us more or less time. Less. Less. Right. So Jeff... Let's talk about the first guy is Jeff. Um, he can paint a room. He can do one job in four hours. And plus, <coughs> Hal does one job in five hours. How long will it take them to work together? One job in X hours, unknown hours. So this is Hal, and this is together. Okay, so how would I clear this fraction? What do we need to do? Go. Multiply by 20x. Good, we're going to multiply by 20x. I'm going to distribute. I'm going to distribute. So I get, here I get 5x. Here I get 4x. And here we get 20. So it's 9x equals... Divide by 9, divide by 9. And we need to change this to hours because hours is part of the story. So x is equal to 2 hours. And what's the remainder? 2 ninths. 2 and 2 ninths hours. Do you understand that? Because 9 goes into 20 two times. It's 18. There's a remainder of 2. We put it over the divisor. Two and two ninths hours. Okay, questions? Yes. Where did you go with two and two I divided nine into twenty. Oh, okay. It goes two oh, times. Okay. The remainder is two. <laughs> I thought I would do the hours and minutes. No, we're gonna just keep it at don't worry about you could do two ninths by doing two ninths of sixty. Mm -hmm. And that would give you the minutes. Two ninths of means times 60 minutes, right? Let me do that. 3 goes into that. 3 times 3 goes into that. 20 times. So it's 40 over 3. 3 into 40 goes how many times? Let's see. So about thir 2 and 13 minutes. Two, about... Two and 13 and a third minutes. Two hours. Yes. yes, just write the fraction. You don't have to. All right. So work rate, the way they do that is they take the two people you're comparing, okay? The way they do it this way is you compare the two people on the side. It's work rate times... Um, the amount of time it takes when they're doing it together. So Jeff does it one in four hours. We don't know their together time. This is one in five hours. We don't know it. Multiply across. One in one-fourth X, one-fifth X equals one complete job. You don't have to write this. We're going to use it later. But do you get the idea? Mm -hmm. Multiply across. Add going up and down, okay? And then that would be the equation. Okay. 
Okay. One water hose can fill a pool in 10 hours. A different hose only takes six hours. So one water hose can fill a pool in 10 hours. A different hose can take only takes six hours. So one, why don't you guys try this one? Remember, it's job over time. Is that for every single problem? Nope, we'll just do this one. Plus job over time equals job over time. You're gonna practice it. Hose problems, they love to do it. I'm filling the hose with the pool with this and I'm filling the pool with this hose, right? Okay, how do we do, guys? Oh my gosh, I forgot to put it on pause. <laughs> Have I been cracking bad jokes too? Okay, all right, so how do we do this one? Who wants to walk me through it? Sorry, you're gonna have to fast forward through that. Yes. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> it's one tenth plus one, one job in 10 hours plus one job in six hours equals one job over x. Good. And an unknown amount. And what are we multiplying by? Multiply it by 30x. Good. Did anybody multiply by 60? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Fine. Doesn't matter. It will reduce to the same thing. So we end up with a 3x. And this we end up with a 5x, 5x equals... 30. 8x equals 30 over 8 over 8. X equals... And what's... It reduces to, well, 8 goes into 30 how many times? Three times. Three times. What's the remainder? 6 over 8. 6 over 8, and that reduces to? 3 So it's 3 and 3 fourths hours. Got it? Mm -hmm. Now we're going to get make it a little bit more complicated. Okay. Um, I'm going to use the box this time. Remember, it's work rate, so it's rate times time equals the job done, okay? Being able to, and then on the side, we're comparing who we're talking about. And here, who am I talking about? John, John and Sam. John and Sam. So, what is John's work rate? What is John's work rate? His work rate, how many jobs in how much time? Eight. One job in 80 minutes. You with me? Mm -hmm. What's Sam's work rate? One job, One in, two job in two hours. But since the other one's in minutes, let's convert it. Right. You want to be in the same units. Now, is it easier to convert? I think it's easier to work with it in minutes as opposed to converting the 80 minutes to hours because that would be a decimal, right? And then time. How much is their time together? We don't know. Let's call it x. Multiply across. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry, sorry. I'm not reading the problem. Um, it takes, okay. John can tile a room in 80 minutes. It takes Sam two hours. If John works alone for 30 minutes... Who's working alone? John. So we don't know they're together time, so we're going to call them both X. But who's working more? John. So I'm going to do the plus 30 there. So now we multiply across, 
if he works alone for 30 minutes and then Sam helps him finish, how much longer will it take? So I do 1 over 80 times x plus 30, right? And here we're doing 1 over 120x equals one complete job. Okay, so it's 1 over 80 times... Okay, now, I want to clear my fractions, okay? I want you to remember, there are three terms in this sentence. The terms are connected through multiplication. So this is a term, this is a term, this is a term. So when I think of a number to multiply the whole thing by, what would it be? Two hundred and forty, right? And I really only distribute once to this term, and I get three times everything in the parenthesis, x plus thirty. You with me? Okay. And then when I distribute here, one twenty goes twice, so we get plus two x. And then I have to distribute here equals 240. Okay? You guys with me? Mm -hmm. Which is 3x plus 90 plus 2x equals 240. Now I'm going to combine my like terms. 3x and 2x make 5x plus 90 equals 240. Subtract the 90. No, I combined my like terms. 3x and 2x make 5x, right? Okay. And then I get 5x equals 150. Divide by 5, divide by 5. x equals 30. Okay. And what does 30 stem from? 30 minutes. What did you say? Where did I get what from? 240. Well, what's the least common denominator between 80 and 120? Oh. <coughs> right? Okay, got it? Okay, moving on. Yes? Wouldn't the final answer actually be 60 because you have to add on the time that he worked on his own? How much longer? It says how much longer. Oh, how much longer, okay. Okay. All right, Julie, can you want to try this one on your own? Um, let's see. Just try setting it up so at least we know. Pause the recording, unlike I did last time. Let's look. Julie can complete an, a wedding cake in, in eight hours. So how would I fill that in? One over eight. Good. And what's Marty's time? One over ten. Good. Now, how am I writing the time, guys? If Julie and Marty work together for four hours, how long will it take Julie to finish it? What'd you say? Eight plus four. No. For time. How long do they both work together? Four hours. And then we know Julie does an unknown amount of time. So what would I show? Four plus, plus x. x. Multiply it across. So I get one-eighth times four plus x. And this becomes four tenths. This plus this equals one complete job. So it's one eighth times four plus x plus four tenths equals one. Now, what do you want to multiply it by to clear it? 40x. 40x, yes? How come you didn't do plus x for Marty? What? How come you didn't do because it says if Julie and Marty work together for four hours, they both do four, how long will it take Julie to finish the job alone? So she's doing alone time here. Then won't you have to subtract it? No. She's four hours plus <coughs> her alone time. If you did subtracted it, no, it's four hours plus her. Yeah. Yeah. I think it should just be 40, not 40x. 
no oh, you're right. 40. Thank you. So multiplying by 40. Thank you. And then we get here 5. And then we're left with 4 plus x plus it goes 4 times 4 is 16 equals 40. So then we end up with 20x, no, 20 plus 5x plus 16 equals 40. And this makes 36. Subtract 36, subtract 36, and we end up with 5x equals 4, divide by 5, divide by 5, and x equals 4 fifths of what? An hour. An hour. If we wanted to figure out exactly how many minutes, we would do 4 over 5 times 60. It's 12, it's 48 minutes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Questions? All right, moving on. They're not so bad, are they? No. Work problems are pretty okay. Okay, some distance problems. Two planes leave Chicago at the same time. The westbound plane travels 900 miles. The eastbound plane goes 150 miles faster and travels 1,200 miles. Oops. Okay? So this is the same thing that we've been doing. The only thing that changes is your math. Before, you were never given a variable in your denominator. Now you are. So they don't get any more difficult. They're really the same. Remember, it says one's eastbound, one's westbound. So what's happening? Shh. Opposite direction. Right opposite directions, how long until they're right. So basically it's looking like this. And then this one's going 1,200 miles. And this is going uh, 900. This is the east. This is the, no, the east is the other one, sorry. This is the east. This is the west. Actually, that's tr more true to form. And they also said this guy's going faster, right? Mm -hmm. So it's basically how long until they're like this, how long until this guy's done 900, he's done 1,200. The time is the same, right? Mm -hmm. So we fill our box. Um, we know that the distance for the west is what? 900. We know the distance for the east is? And then we know that one plane goes faster. Which one? So we'll call R and R, and we'll do R plus 150. Now, what do, what do we say about the time? It's the same. We don't know what it is, but it's the same. Now, you could multiply across. You have two equations, and you can do uh, substitution. But I want to show you something. Since time is the same, right? Rate times time equals distance. If I divide by R, time is equal to distance over rate. I could write my equation going this way and then do substitution, but I could also write my equation like this. So time here is equal to distance over rate. What's the, for, the e, for the West, what is the distance? So it's 900 over what? R. R. Is equal to, the other one is 1,200 over, good. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have done it like that. I, should, I mean, that's how it's going to end up, right? So we have t, t equals, and the other one is T equals 1,200 over R plus 150. And then what do we do? Substitution. Boom, right? So I end up with 1,200 over R plus 150 equals 900 over R. Now what? It's a proportion, guys. What do we do? 
multiply. So it's 900 times R plus 150. And this is 1200R. Okay? If I distribute, I'll move. If I distribute, right, I'm going to have 1200R equals 900R plus 135,000. Now subtract 900R, and we're left with 300R equals 135,000. Divide by 300, R equals 450. And this is miles per hour. And they're asking, they want the, find both speeds. So this one is 450, right, MPH. What's the other one? Because R. We already named this as R. Okay, what's the other one? R plus 150? This is 600 MPH. Okay? Because 450, it's substituting it in, hon. 450 plus 150 is 600. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to go on and let's do, okay, let's, uh, okay. If I had done this, so this was um, R and then the T we don't know. And the distance was 900, right? And this is R plus 150 times T equals 1,200. I could have just created two equations. Remember I told you to do rate times time equals distance divided by R. Time is equal to distance over R. But I, I And so we set it up like this, right? You can still use this. RT equals 900. T times R plus 150 equals 1,200. Get the variable alone. T is the easiest one. Divide by R, divide by R. T equals 900 over R. Divide by R plus 150. Divide by R plus 150. Right? T equals 1,200 over R plus 150. So, we're still going to do the same thing. Do you understand? So, you can go right to this. Nobody says you have to start in rate times time equals distance. You can start from the time is equal to distance over rate. Or you can, uh, if you know that the rate is the same, you can get the R alone and put, you know, distance over time, too. Does that make sense? Okay. I think there's two more problems. So do you see why it's 450 and 600? Good. And it's miles per hour. Okay. So let's do this. Remember, I'm doing rate times time equals distance. I'm comparing Ann and Mark. Now let's see what we have. Anne leaves school and walks home for 3.75 miles. Where does that go? Time. Wait, no, sorry. Right. Distance. Distance. Right, under distance because it's miles and it's for Anne. So I'm going to place 3.75 here. Mark runs home 1.5 miles per hour faster than Anne. What does that mean? So what am I going to call her rate? What am I calling his? Good. Um, 
If he lives six miles from school and they both leave and arrive at the same time, what does that tell me? Distance is six. His distance is six. And what else does it tell me? And they both arrive at the same time. So again, I can do uh, time is equal to distance over rate, right? So I can build equation number one. T equals what? This is Ann. So we're going to do 3.75 over R. And the other one is T equals 6 over R plus 1.5. And so we're setting it at 3.75 because we're going to do substitution over R equals 6 times R plus 1.5. I can do my cross products. So 3.75 times R plus 1.5 all over equals uh, 6R. Now you can multiply by 100, right? Oh. That's, if I multiply by 100, it's only affecting this. Because this is all one term. I can't change the inside too. Okay, so I think it might be worth it. Since I have a, a decimal inside and outside, I'm just going to deal with it. So that will be 3.75R plus... times 1.5 is 5.65. Now, I can clear it now. I'm just supposed to multiply it by 100. I can multiply it by 100 now, but it's still not going to help this. Okay? I've still got this. So now I, I can multiply by 1,000. Then I get 3, 7, 5, 0, oh, 1, 2, 3, yeah. Plus 5, 6, 2, 5 <coughs> equals 6,000 R. How come because I've got to move it once, twice, three times. So I need three zeros. Okay? So now I'm subtracting 56, 25 from both sides. So oh, no, I'm not. I'm subtracting 37, 50. R from both sides, okay, and then we end up with 5625 equals, yeah, did you, have, did you do it with the calculator? No, no he's probably right, what did you say, 2250? Yeah. Good, you got it right. Divide by 2250. Divide by 2250. So I have 56, 25. Divided by 2250. And we end up with something very pretty. R equals 2.5. So how long did it take them? That's not what I'm looking for. How long did it take them? You could use either equation. I'd like to use, if my R is 2.5, I think since this has a decimal, I'm going to substitute it in here. So 2.5 plus 1.5 makes what? Four. four. So then I've got 4T equals 6. Divide by 4, divide by 4. T equals, it goes 1. <coughs> it's in miles per hour. And it, I have a remainder of one half, so 1.5 hours. T equals 1.5 hours. Okay, questions. Are you understanding it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to practice it to learn it. How, do you, how come you have to divide it? Can't you just divide it like 2.5 and then you can just do 2.5? 2.5 is 2.5. Wait, well, you would have to... Use this rate times time. You have to find the t. I chose to use it here. 4t equals 6. You haven't found the time. They're asking how long did it take them.
Do you understand? So I used, rate. I didn't want to use, you have two equations. Rate times time equals 3.75. I found the other decimal, 1.5. I could have used that, 1.5. No, it was a 2.5, sorry. 2.5 t equals 3.75. Divide by 2.5. I just didn't want a decimal and a decimal. This I can do in my head. This I did in my head. 2.5 plus 1.5. So they'll both be the same answer? Yeah. Okay. Well, here. I'm going to do it. 3.75. 3.75. Divided by 2.5 equals 1.5. It's the same thing. You can use either original equation. Let's look. I'm sure theirs is much neater. They just did it like that. I use the other one. Okay, last problem. Ooh. The reciprocal of 4 less than x, the reciprocal of 4 less than x is 3 times the reciprocal of x. The reciprocal of, first of all, how do I write this, 4 less than x? x minus 4. Good, x minus 4. So what would be the reciprocal of that? 1 over x minus 4. Good. So it's 1 over x minus 4. x stands for a number. Okay, is equals 3 times the reciprocal of x. 1 over x. Isn't that 3 over x? Mm -hmm. So I could write that as 1 over x minus 4 equals 3 over x. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure theirs is going to be much neater. Okay. What's my restriction here? Four. Right. Four or zero. And so now I think the easiest way is just to do the cross products. So we're doing x times 1 is x. And this is going to be equals 3 times x minus 4. So x equals 3x minus 12. 12. Minus 3. No, I'm going to move the other way. Well, okay, minus 3x. Minus 3x, we end up with negative 2x equals negative 12. Divide by negative 2. And we end up with x equals 6. You don't know what the reciprocal is? No, for 4 less than x. Okay, it's a reciprocal is a flip. So what's the reciprocal of 3 fourths? 4 thirds. So what's the reciprocal of x minus 4? Anything is always over 1. So the reciprocal would be 1 over x minus 4. And I believe this is the last one. Yay. Okay.